Then, of course, we have to talk about the news that's been absolutely all over the place concerning the whole Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez and Kelsey issue, the shooting. Did it happen? How did it happen? Why did it happen? So far, there's been a lot of updates in terms of what happened in court. Um, I read through a couple of tweets here. This is taken from Megan Cuniff, who tweeted as follows. Um, the court takes a 90 minute break at noon. So we're really only going to hear probably 45 minutes of testimony. Let's roll on from there. It says here that trial is on. No, yeah, but Kelsey really struggled when Deputy K asked her about Tori threatening to shoot her while they were in the escalate before Megan exited the sh um, was shot. She did not want to answer. Uh, but yeah, let, let's actually let me put the other bit. I think the other guy maybe has a. It's a bit more concise, so I can maybe go through it. Um, let me see. Is it this one? I think it might be this guy. This is a courtesy of a guy called James Queeley. You can check him out on Twitter. It's James Queeley L A T. Um, and he says as follows Kelsey Harris testimony at Tory Lane's trial began with her showing up with an attorney and asking for immunity this has been a big bombshell of the day basically her coming in asking for immunity because you know that you know raises loads of red flags in terms of who actually was responsible for the shooting and why she's asking for immunity if she didn't do nothing wrong it was granted even after the DA swore that they had no intent to prosecute her no explanation as to what the immunity is for, no comment from Lanes's defense attorney and Harris and her attorney fled the hallway before they could be approached by reporters. Kelsey spent less than 40 minutes on the stand, saying a lot of her memory of the party was blurry because of the alcoholic consumption. She accused Megan of lying about her and called accusation that she shot Megan ridiculous. She generally painted Megan as a drunk and acting out at the party before the fight in the SUV that per that predated the shooting. Key moment came when the DDA, Kathy Tarr, asked if Lanes was threatened to shoot Kelsey and Kelsey took the fifth. So it's another detail I don't really know nothing about, this idea that Tory Lanes threatened to shoot Kelsey in some sort of argument that they had. Maybe it was on a day, maybe it was another day. We, we don't really, not too sure about that. The court, bro um, court broke not long after this. One, two key points whether Lanes threatened her, whether Lanes called her and Meg bitches and hoes. Kelsey has non-responsive until DDA reminded her that her that she confirmed both things in September 2022 interview with the prosecution. Court resume at 1.30. One more thing. Kelsey was granted use immunity, meaning the DA's office can't use her testimony in the case of prosecute her for a crime. It does not mean that they are declining to prosecute her for any criminal conduct they may be aware of. So it looks like it's a particular use immunity. It doesn't cover everything. This explanation is a According to the source of the ton of legal experience, her attorney asked for a transactional immunity, which could have been broader. It was not granted. So basically, the only update we've had that's really been a big bombshell is obviously Kelsey, Megan's former friend, who was there at the event that they went to that led to the shooting, essentially saying, hey, I want immunity. And then people are now speculating as to why she's asking for immunity. Maybe she was involved in the shooting. We don't really know. But essentially you know hearing most of this story and kind of covering it or watching it from afar the only lesson really to be learned from this is that try to be a really good house guest or a house party guest or a gathering guest because she kept saying it's not a party when they went to kylie kylie minogue kylie jenner's house it was a gathering try to be a good guest and it's really difficult to be one i try to pride myself to be the best house party guest ever and you know i try and bring some stuff i try and bring some drinks but i also don't outstay my welcome when it's time to go home i go home and i don't even wait for people to say hey go that's usually a sign that you've probably overstayed your welcome and just being a good you know a good vibe not trying to hit on everybody that's in there dancing having a good time getting people drinks maybe going on a drink run with someone and just generally being a, a good company is really, 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 really important because from what we've seen so far, it sounds like what Kelsey's saying in her version of events is that when she, when Megan did arrive at the party or Megan was there already, no, she was there before and then Megan arrived later. When she arrived, she was really drunk. She was acting out already, being a bit belligerent, just being an annoying drunk, which everybody, you know, is entitled to be. I'm sure we all have friends in our little social group who can kind of be a little bit extra when they start getting a little bit liquored up. Megan went a bit too over the top. Kylie didn't like it. And the vibes were basically saying, hey, you guys need to leave. I think Kylie and her friend decide, hey, we should go before we get told to leave. They leave, but then they leave Tori behind because he's having a thing with Kylie. He's basically trying to shoot his shot, I'm assuming, and maybe she's entertaining, maybe she isn't, but he's okay. He doesn't mind to stay because he came later. Then they convince him to leave. No, then they leave the two girls. 
Um, and then somehow Megan says, oh, I left my slipper back there. And they go back to get the slipper. But, you know, that's really code to get back Tori because I'm guessing she was a bit pissed off and jealous that maybe he was back there. Or maybe she was just annoyed that she got chucked out. Who knows? She goes there. Something occurs inside the place that causes Tori and Meg to come out and be angry at each other. So some sort of argument. Who knows what happened? They come outside and then once they come outside and get in a car, an argument starts again. And that's what leads to the shooting. So we still don't know who actually pulled the trigger, even though we have, I think, gunpowder residue on Tori and Kelsey. For some reason, they didn't test Megan, maybe because she was a victim. I'm not really too sure. But so far, whatever version of events that Megan laid out, we haven't really heard anything to corroborate it. The only thing we know for sure is that she got shot. We don't know if it was directly, if it was shrapnel, but we know definitely a gun went off and some whatever that bullet hit, it hit her foot and she bled. Um, but we haven't had anyone corroborate the dance bitch dance. We haven't had anybody say directly they saw Tori do it. So it's a bit he said, she said, which maybe can maybe explain why a lot of people don't really report, especially women don't report instances of violence against them in any way, shape or form. But I think one of the main takeaways from this should be an encouragement and a reminder to most women if they do go through such traumatic you know instances to make sure that they report it straight away and that they stick to what actually happened in terms of whatever claim that you put out there because i think the fact that megan from her side said that she was trying to protect tori and didn't want him to die or get shot or anything at the time and that's what she said she didn't get shot she stepped on glass and then she changed her mind later on where she had an interview with oprah's friend gail king people immediately started to cast aspersion and doubt on her story myself included because the message just kept changing but it could be legitimately that she was trying to look out for the guy then later on when he started doing what he was doing when he started doing you know industry games behind the scenes she got pissed off hey i'm not why i'm trying to protect him he's a piece of shit and then she's going to tell the truth by the time she told the truth everybody saw her as a bit of a liar so it kind of made things weird so in general like i said before number one lesson from this try and be a good house party guest if you're getting a bit too intoxicated a bit too liquored up just get yourself an uber and leave and the other thing also is just if you're a woman for sure if you go through something as traumatic as this you must report it you just must report it as early as possible and stick to your story no matter what sometimes the unfortunate side of it is that sometimes even if you do that it doesn't mean somebody will get prosecuted but it will give you a far better chance for that to happen because so far what i'm seeing and the evidence laid out i can't see a scenario where tori is found guilty of shooting megan there's just too much doubt um there's too much confusion there's too much conjecture there's too many different stories floating about there and you know basically kelsey was basically kelsey who was megan's former friend has basically taken a stand in this you know essentially gone against everything that megan said in terms of version of events it was a little bit you know a little bit personal because she came on the stand according to the reporters and it was very emotional and i think she said something like oh i don't even know why i'm here uh, you know so clearly they are still very much on bad terms to the point where you know even in this distressing moment where you'd maybe think there'd be a bit more solidarity between them being women and whatnot and going through that experience together even though Kelsey wasn't sure you'd think maybe she'd be like you know what even though I don't mess with this girl I'm just going to tell the truth of what happened and have her back but she hasn't done that she's got had all this time she's moved on she's got a kid she's got a new relationship everything's kind of changed in her life and clearly that hasn't you know time hasn't healed those wounds and she came in and basically wanted to it felt like embarrass um you know to, uh, megan exposed maybe the lies and whatnot and i don't think it was anything to do with tory personally i don't think that hush money thing is legit from my experience i think the fact that they were also sloppy with this whole affair anyway because it feels like to me if, if anyone was asking me what happened i felt like something did happen with the gun but i felt like they all agreed in that car or when they were in there when whatever stuff was going on that they weren't going to say anything i think that's what they all agreed it came to just some you know kind of weird group agreement that they were going to keep it themselves but then police were already called and then when the police were called and they were all taken separately because i think mega went to a hospital and maybe kelsey came after or you know tory got booked and went to prison for a bit or jail and then he got bailed out and then the labels and managers started coming involved and they wanted to start doing a bit of damage control that's when things changed but i feel like my personal opinion is that something definitely went down and then they kind of agreed to stick to where their story is but then as time progressed and feelings changed and maybe people sobered up and were like no actually that guy was being a prick to me fuck him and then you know whatever happened and not you know maybe as well she could have just mega could have just been drunk who knows she could have just been plain old drunk and high and whatever it may be and she thought she saw tori shooting but he didn't and that's okay also 
But I think the main point, like I said before, is to be a good house guest. And also if you're a woman and you get into a situation like that, you just must report it as soon as possible and stick to your story no matter what, because it looks like people do go out of their way, especially in court. So especially just when you have to rely on witnesses and stuff, you don't, you can't really hold any expectation that they're going to corroborate your story or they're going to help your case because it could literally change like that. Because I don't think anybody had any idea Kelsey was going to turn up and basically um, go against everything that Megan said and also ask for that plea deal um, or that flipping immunity thing no one had any idea she played that really close to her chest so that was obviously a move to kind of make sure that she kind of gets away with it or doesn't get charged for whatever she's afraid of getting charged for